This is Plant-Based Briefing, Five Common Mistakes Plant-Based Eaters Make and How to Avoid Them, Part 2, by Ocean Robbins at foodrevolution.org. And I'm your host, Mary Erickson, and this is the second of a two-part post. If you haven't listened to yesterday's yet, go back and listen to that first because we're continuing on where we left off. So now let's get to today's Plant-Based Briefing. Five Common Mistakes Plant-Based Eaters Make and How to Avoid Them, Part 2, by Ocean Robbins at foodrevolution.org. Vitamin D. Vitamin D is another nutrient of concern, and again, not just for those on plant-based diets. At least 50% of the global population doesn't get enough of this nutrient, which is important for immunity and bone health. Vitamin D is also being studied for its ability to prevent and lessen the severity of COVID-19 infections. Like with B12, it's not necessarily the diet per se that's the problem, but rather our modern existence. Technically, vitamin D isn't really a vitamin because we can make it ourselves when our skin is exposed to direct sunlight. It's only the invention of indoors that keeps most people from producing enough vitamin D to meet their body's needs. Some animal-based foods do provide some vitamin D, including fatty fish and egg yolks. Plant-based eaters can get some vitamin D from fortified plant milks, as well as certain varieties of UV-treated mushrooms. But by far the most reliable way to meet your needs is through a daily vitamin D3 supplement, at least in the winter months, if you don't get much sun where you live, or as a year-round maintenance dose. Omega-3s Omega-3 fatty acids are important for brain health, skin, and protection from neurodegenerative diseases. It's easy to get the precursor form of omega-3, called ALA, from plants, The best sources of ALA are flax and chia seeds, and there are smaller amounts in walnuts, hemp seeds, and some leafy greens. We then convert ALA into other forms our bodies also need, principally EPA and DHA. The problem is the conversion rate is low and varies significantly from person to person. Fish and other seafood contain DHA and EPA, which they get by consuming algae. If you choose not to consume sea animals or supplements made from their oil— You can skip the middle fish and take a plant-based, algae-derived omega-3 supplement. Iodine. There are a few other nutrients that you may want to supplement depending on your needs and your diet. Iodine is a nutrient crucial to proper thyroid function. We get iodine from sea vegetables and iodized salt. But if you're trying to limit your sodium intake, the best way to meet your iodine needs may be through supplementation. You can take a dedicated iodine supplement or a multivitamin that contains iodine. Iron. The type of iron in plant foods, non-heme, is different from the type found in animal products, heme, and tends to be less readily absorbed in our bloodstream. Many people get too much iron, so low bioavailability is often a good thing, but not for everyone. The best plant sources of iron include legumes, dark leafy greens, seeds, and nuts, You can boost your iron absorption by eating vitamin C-rich foods at the same time. These include citrus fruits, strawberries, bell peppers, broccoli, tomatoes, and many others. Vitamin K2 Vitamin K2 helps support bone and heart health when combined with vitamin D. There are two forms of vitamin K, K1 and K2. K1 is easy to source from leafy greens. But K2 is harder to find in plants unless you're a regular eater of a fermented dish called natto. If natto isn't your thing, vitamin K2 may be found in other fermented foods. While the exact amount of K2 in fermented foods can vary, consuming some sort of fermented foods like kimchi or sauerkraut daily may help directly deliver K2, and it may also promote healthy bacteria, which could possibly lead to making K2 in your gut. Or, to be sure, you can take a supplement. Success Step Find reliable plant-based supplements to support your diet, especially for the nutrients mentioned earlier in this article. And in consultation with your healthcare provider, make them a regular part of your routine. Editor's note, some friends of ours created Complement Plus to help meet the specific nutrient needs of plant-based eaters. It has a carefully chosen amount of important nutrients that even a healthy plant-based diet may be lacking, including DHA, EPA, B12, D3, iodine, selenium, magnesium, K2, and zinc. If you're interested, find out more about this product linked here. Note, if you make a purchase, Complement will make a contribution in support of Food Revolution Network's mission, so you can support your health and healthy, ethical, and sustainable food for all at the same time. Mistake number four, limiting your menu. Thanks to Hollywood tropes linking healthy eating to ascetic and joyless lives, 
there's a common misconception that going plant-based means subsisting on leafy greens with the occasional carrot thrown in for variety. And while I love a big bowl of leafy greens, this is far from the only thing on my menu or the menu of most plant-based eaters today. One of the best parts of adopting a plant-based diet is the chance to experiment with an abundance of beautiful, colorful, versatile plant foods you may never have tried before. Most people don't know this, but each type of plant provides a unique type of fiber, and each type of microbe in our gut needs different types of fiber. So we need many, many different types of fiber in order to feed the diversity of microbes that we need to be healthy. That's why you'll thrive the best when eating a wide range of different veggies, legumes, whole grains, fruits, seeds, and nuts, mushrooms, etc. Success Step Not sure where to start? Check out the recipes below, bookmark a few plant-based blogs like Food Revolution Networks for inspiration, or crack open a plant-based cookbook. If you're just getting into this way of eating, you might plan to try just one new recipe every week. And mistake number five, comparing your diet and yourself to others. When adopting a plant-based diet, remember that it's a change you're making for your own reasons. This means that you get to design your own diet to meet your personal needs and preferences. The best whole foods plant-based diet is the one that is optimal for you, your health, and your values. It doesn't have to be identical to mine, your best friend's, or anyone else's. Comparison is a thief of joy, whether we're talking about our net worth, physique, ability to play the intro to Purple Haze on electric guitar, or our diet and lifestyle choices. And it can make it harder to stick to a specific way of eating if you're constantly trying to measure up and achieve the best diet. Make plant-based eating work for you, and don't worry about whether your version or anyone else's is healthier, purer, or better. Success Step Rather than comparing or competing, connect with others who are also somewhere on the plant-powered path, sharing mutual support, encouragement, socialization, and inspiration. Potlucks, collective meals, and plant-based recipe swaps can help everyone up their healthy eating game and have more fun in the process. And if you want to be sure that you're meeting your nutritional needs, then you might consider meeting with a plant-based dietitian. Best Foods for a Healthy Plant-Based Diet as you're transitioning to a plant-based diet, be sure to prioritize whole plant foods as much as possible. These provide you the most nutritional bang for your buck, plus they're delicious, and they get better tasting over time as your taste buds and neural pathways adjust. You'll learn countless ways to use new foods, even some you thought you didn't like before. Here's a quick list of the basics and some creative ways to use them. Beans and lentils. Use them in homemade veggie burgers, in spaghetti sauce over pasta, bean-based, no-bake energy snack balls, roasted chickpeas over salad or as a crunchy seasoned snack, topped on nachos, or in tacos, enchiladas, burritos, and burrito bowls. Fruits, in smoothies, toppers for oatmeal, yogurt, or cereal, eaten on their own or with nut butter as a snack, chopped and used in a grain or leafy green salad, roasted or grilled peaches or baked apples, or avocado toast. Vegetables, steamed, roasted, grilled, or sautéed, on kebabs, toppers for homemade pizza, on stir-fries and pasta dishes, in smoothies, leafy greens and peas, blended to make tomato-based sauces, vegetable and bean soups, layered raw vegetable sandwiches, served raw with hummus, or made into chips in an air fryer. Whole grains, cooked in water or stock and served with a yummy sauce, quinoa, aramanth, millet, or oats as breakfast cereal base, experimenting with different whole grain flours in baking, whole wheat noodles and breads as flours for homemade pizza dough, pancakes, and waffles, grain salads using farro, amaranth, millet, or teff, or air-popped popcorn, and nuts and seeds. Make homemade nut or seed butters, eat raw and unsalted as a snack or in a trail mix with dried fruit, Chop and add to grain or leafy green salads. Use cashews to make cashew cream for soups or a plant-based cheese sauce. Add to smoothies or spread on toast or in sandwiches, on pancakes and waffles. To experience plant-based ingredients in action, try some of the recipes linked below. Harvest Grain Breakfast Bowl Pumpkin Oat Bites Jackfruit Taco Chili Beet Burgers and Vitality Smoothie Bowl you can avoid these plant-based diet mistakes. 
Transitioning to a plant-based diet can be a wonderful thing, not just for your own health, but the health of the animals, the planet, and everyone around you. Plant-based food benefits far outweigh any cons of following a vegan or vegetarian diet. And while whole foods, plant-based diets can meet the majority of your nutritional needs, it's important to supplement appropriately and plan a well-rounded diet that incorporates an array of healthy foods. Make plant-based eating work for you by intentionally designing a plan that meets your needs and preferences. By doing so, you can avoid the most common plant-based eating mistakes and experience all the wonderful things this diet has to offer. You just listened to Five Common Mistakes Plant-Based Eaters Make and How to Avoid Them, Part 2, by Ocean Robbins at foodrevolution.org. And I'm your host, Marian Erickson, and please share this episode with anyone who might be curious about a plant-based diet. And if you do, don't forget to share Part 1, which was yesterday's episode. Thanks for listening.